In this video, we will apply concepts from computer modeling as a way of understanding wildlife population dynamics because this understanding helps to form a broader basis for principles and approaches that are used in wildlife management. Wildlife populations change over time and this change over time is known as trend. If we were to track population size over time, we would see how that pattern might look in a graph like this one. One way of thinking about trend in wildlife populations is to use the analogy of a bathtub. A bathtub can be filled with water from the tap or can be emptied of water through a drain. The volume of water flowing into the tub is controlled by a valve on the tap and the rate at which water is emptied from the tub is controlled by a valve on the drain pipe. So the analogy to wildlife is to think of the amount of water within the tub as a wildlife population. So in this context, the only way for a population to increase is through births of babies or through immigration as an inflow. And the only way for a population to decrease is for animals to leave the population because they have died or they have emigrated out, shown here as an outflow from the tub. The balance between the rate of inflows, or births and immigration, and outflows, deaths and emigration, gives us the actual number of animals in our bathtub model. By tracking the number of animals, or the level of water over time in our bathtub model, we can monitor trend. Biologists refer to these types of bathtub models as stock and flow models, where a stock represents a group of animals and flow refers to the number of new animals added or removed. For this example, we will assume that the number of animals immigrating and emigrating cancel each other out. So let's apply the concept of a stock and flow model to an animal population and we'll use caribou as an example. Firstly, we recognize that there are two sexes, female shown above and male shown below, and we defined three age classes, calves, yearlings and adults. Each age and sex of caribou in this model structure represents a stock or unique group within the population. The green arrows represent inflow rates from one stock to another. For example, a certain proportion of calves become yearlings, calf survival. A certain proportion of yearlings survive to become adults, yearling recruitment. And similarly, only a proportion of adults survive from one year to the next, adult survival. The long green arrow linking adult females to calves is the annual rate of births, which is generally referred to as calf productivity. Another important assumption to highlight here is that female and male calves are born into the population at an even sex ratio. In contrast, the red arrows represent the number of animals leaving each of the six stocks in the stock and flow model. Simply put, the red arrows represent rates of death or mortality rates. To turn this simple conceptual model into a working model, we would need to estimate the number of animals within each stock, estimate rates of birth, death, and survival for each of the green and red arrows, and the final steps would be to link the stocks and flows over a defined time period, usually a year, and then to write out the relationships between stocks and flows using mathematical equations. We typically need to use a computer to track and calculate all of the various equations, inputs, and outputs. So this simple structure can be an effective way of thinking about a wildlife population, but in the real world, there are many different ages of adult animals and a better model might be based upon more than one stock for adults. Here we have broken down the adult animal component into three classes, young, mature and old adults. And As you can see, as we add complexity and realism to models, we add the need for more detailed information and we also have to be very clear about our assumptions. For example, we would need to estimate the rates of calf productivity for each class of adult female caribou. In this example, we also have to specify 
what we mean by young, mature, and old adults, and define the number of years within each age class. A key point to take away is that wildlife population models can be quite simple and straightforward and easy to understand. A challenge is that as we add more details to the models and turn them into working simulation models, the only way we can do the hundreds and sometimes thousands of calculations needed is to use a computer. So we should think of computer simulation models with this in mind, that they are tools that help us visualize and represent the thinking we already do. Indeed, wildlife population models are part of the Wildlife Manager's Toolkit. Models provide a way for management partners, local experts, and biologists to communicate, work together, and use what they know. Models may also provide a way to inform decision makers about various options and how to best manage wildlife for the future. In summary, there are three main points to consider about computer models and modeling. Firstly, models and modeling can be used to explain and share our understanding of wildlife population dynamics. Secondly, our understanding of population dynamics forms the basis for wildlife management. And thirdly, model inputs should be informed by data and outputs interpreted with help of expert knowledge and local expertise. It is also important to recognize that input data for models can come from studies by biologists, but also from traditional and local knowledge. Thank you for your interest. Please join me in the next video where we will explore the topics of natural mortality and sustainable harvesting.